with winds of up to 100 miles per hour and temperatures that go as low as minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, the frozen Antarctic isn't exactly a welcoming place for the common man. That's why in 1940 the huge Antarctic snow cruiser was deployed in the freezing south to act as a mobile exploration base. The problem is, that impressive machine failed miserably and I have a complete video on it which you can watch by clicking up here. But if a purpose-built behemoth wasn't up to the task, what was? Well, explorers used tracked vehicles with great success over time, but they were slow and not exactly comfortable. What about a Volkswagen Beetle then? Seems like a crazy idea, doesn't it? But that's exactly what happened. Several VW bugs were used in Antarctica with much success and I'm here to tell you everything about it. So stick around until the end of this video to find out the story of Antarctica 1, the first ever successful use of a pretty much standard passenger car near the South Pole. In 1962, the Australian National Antarctic Research Expeditions, which had several bases in the South, was looking for a cheap motorized vehicle to complement the heavy tracked vehicles at its Mawson base. As with most other Arctic and Antarctic expeditions, transportation on the frozen surface was and still is based on dog sleighs, tracked machines and occasionally motorbikes. And they usually work fine, but it's a pain to get to close destinations on either of these modes of transport. The dog sleighs need experienced people in them, the tracked vehicles are slow and burn a lot of fuel and the motorcycles make the already fast winds faster which can't be good for anyone's health. So a young engineer named Ray McMahon picked up his phone and rang Volkswagen Australasia to ask if the German brand would be willing to loan a car for the upcoming 1963 expedition. And guess what? VW said yes. Imagine that. Moreover, Volkswagen winterized the Beetle at the company's expense and provided a box full of spare parts and spare wheels. As for the whole winterizing process, the Australian-made ruby red 1962 and a half model year Beetle got a rebuilt engine with special European winter quality crankshaft bearings for extreme low temperature conditions. It was also fitted with a pair of heavy duty 6 volt batteries in series so that starting could be made at 12 volts through the 6 volt starter motor, but the rest of the electrical system remained 6 volt. A rear tow bar and sump guard was fitted as well as a factory storage rack on the roof and asbestos insulation on the exhaust manifolds to assist initial warm up. All in all, not a lot had been done to the car that would be known as the Antarctica 1, as shown on the specially made aluminum number plates. So in January of 1963, the first passenger car to ever touch Antarctica's ice was unloaded from the Neladan ship, along with the normal year's supply, filled up with BP winter-grade gasoline and put into service. Now, it's worth mentioning that some people see the Arrol Johnston motor car that accompanied Ernest Shackleton in his 1907 expedition as the first ever car to go to Antarctica. But to be honest, that was little more than a carriage with an engine. Then there's a baby Austin 7 that supposedly got to Antarctica in 1927 with Sir Hubert Wilkins, but there are no photos of it and apart from the odd mention in Wilkins' biography, nobody seems to know anything about it. So this Australian made Volkswagen Beetle is the true first ever proper car to go into Antarctica and it did its job with flying colors but you need to remember that it was supposed to be a sort of runabout vehicle for short trips around the base so no more than 20 miles per trip. It was after all just a small car with snow chains and minimal modifications not the earth-shattering American machine that was brought to the frozen south two decades earlier. It was used for transporting supplies out to field teams, towing skiers around the base and taxiing VIPs to and from the airfield at Rumdoodle, among other things. The Antarctica 1 Beetle served Australia's base for a year, during which time it covered a total of around 1300 miles or 2100 kilometers, and nothing really went wrong with it, apart from one thing, the constant cracking of the chassis framehead 
where the two transverse front suspension tubes mount to the frame. The first cracks appeared just after a few hundred miles of service because of the punishing terrain and the low temperatures, but the mechanics quickly knew how to diagnose the issue and were able to weld the metal and fix the problems. The Beetle was loved by the Australian team and got the nickname Red Terror because of its pluckiness, but in 1964 it was time for a replacement, which was another Beetle, but this time around it was called Antarctica 2. It was painted orange and had additional bracing of the front axle to reduce the frame head problem. The first ever mass-produced car to be used in Antarctica was returned to Australia in 1964 via the same Nella Dan ship that took it to the frozen south in the first place. But it didn't go in a museum, instead it entered the 1964 BP rally and won it which was yet another success for the German compact car. A few years after its rally success, the Antarctica 1 VW simply disappeared. It was never rediscovered with some anecdotal evidence showing that a number of Volkswagens were simply bulldozed in the 1970s when the land where Antarctica 1 was sitting was redeveloped. But there's no concrete evidence to back it up. It might as well be sitting in a dusty Australian barn somewhere waiting to be found. There is, however, a replica which was made in the early 2000s and can now be seen on display at the Volkswagen Museum in Germany. It's fascinating that this run-of-the-mill VW bug managed to work in the grueling Antarctic weather conditions for a whole year, but I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. I read all of them and sometimes I even reply. And that's about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. It really helps with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks for watching.